On 3 December 2018, the United Nations General Assembly adopted with consensus a resolution 24 January as an international day of education in celebration of the role of education for peace. The adoption of the resolution co-authored by Nigeria and 58 other member states demonstrated the unwavering political will to support transformative actions for inclusive, equitable and quality education for the theme this year is focused on examining the many ways learning empower people, protect the planet, building shared pro prosperity and peace. Plus TV Africa therefore spoke to Nigerians on the importance of education. Education is important and not important so because even Abewo is getting more money than the educated people. Education is good. But in Nigerian context, I don't think it's good. Then why? Uh, you can say they have a lot of graduates, master degree holders, even doctoral degrees, but don't have good jobs. You find out that those who have jobs are those who even, maybe the highest level they had was their school sales. I see them at the helm of affairs of government. So <laughs> in Nigerian context, education is not good, but universal education is very, very good. But I would say to our people who care to know, to know, understand that they should go to school. The educational system is um, suffering from a lack of motivation. People are not motivated anymore to actually become good teachers or lecturers or to be good students okay this is my reason now there are a lot of ways you can make it and make it big without education so you see there are so many whiskeys on the streets there are so many naramalis on the streets there are people like um, the celebrated bread seller you know, that made it on the street, you know. These um, isolated events go a long way to psych the people. And when the people are psyched, they have ready examples of people who made it without necessarily being bookworms. You know, they tend to think that they too can go out there and make it on their own. Rather the teacher that teach them, they are not popular in school or full education. So only the education collapse. I can see our children roaming about. They are not even studying. We have them about almost 100 people in class. How can you understand what the teachers talk? And the president, the, the teacher, they have to wait for the teacher to come. They cannot, they have the, they don't have the analysis to go and call the teacher that uh, we have a less subject to teach. Because they are still teenagers. They cannot challenge them. So anytime they see them, they teach them. Or they have, or they, at the end of the day, they ask them to go to other class and collect a, a notebook. They are not, they are not even giving them the... I mean, explanation detail. The only one that to go there and uh, go and copy. And joining us in the studio to talk about this further is Odufu Temilayo, Teach for Nigeria alumni. Thank you, Temilayo, for joining us on News on the Hour. You're welcome. Now, what's your assessment of the primary education in Nigeria? Inequity. And so I was, you know, opportunity to grow in an environment where I could say I have had a very good education. Okay. I enjoyed coming to school. I enjoyed my teachers. I enjoyed the environment. And I grew up thinking that was how... <laughs> You're one of the very few privileged. Yes. <laughs> right. However, I joined the Teach for Nigerian Fellow, um, um, Fellowship in 2017. And... I was posted to a public primary school in Abelkuta, Oregon State. The reality there was alarming. It was disheartening. And I saw kids that could not spell their names, that could not recognize the um, alphabet. Okay. And I realized that inequity is just what is going on, where there is a set of kids that get the quality education and the set that doesn't. Now, the, the guiding principle of equipping citizens with soft skills, attitudes and values as to fulfilling life and contribute to society, do you think this is the case uh, with Nigeria with high rates of unemployable graduates? Hmm. So um, the guiding principle says education is to give us knowledge, skill, attitude and values. So the knowledge is to... Um, for a graduate is to get you the interview, right? The skill would get you the job. The attitude will keep you on the job and the values will keep you longer on the job. Unfortunately, in Nigeria right now, it's mostly the knowledge we're getting. 
the application is we don't get it. You will find most um, graduates, first class, second class, upper. It's just a lacram la poor principle. And this is not what most employers are looking for. And so as much as there are jobs out there, there are, not em there are no employable graduates because they're not being taught, they're not, they're not groomed in a way to use the knowledge and to get the skills the attitudes and the values. Now, there seems to be a huge disparity between schools um, owned in the rural areas and mm -hmm. those owned by the state government and also those owned privately. How can we begin to bridge the disparity? Hmm. Partnership. Okay. So there is this um, recent um, organization called them an organization, the Education Reform Innovative Team, ERIT, a group of private sector um, individuals that are interested in education and so we find that there there is a lot of expertise with in um, in the private sector and there are funds and access to a lot of schools with the public sector now if these two sectors come together and work together the expertise with the funds with the access would we'll find that there will be a balance in the equity I mentioned earlier and we we'll find that public schools are many but the quality is very low. Private schools are not so many, but the quality is high. So why not bring in expertise from the private to come into the public and share the ideas, yes. and then the public um, supports with funds and assets, and you see equity come to play. Temi Layo Dufua, thank you very much for joining us and for your contribution. Thank you.